What's good, YouTubers and YouTubettes? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Happy Labor Day! Hope you're eating plenty of barbecue, or maybe that's not your meat of choice. Maybe you're going out to eat, going to a seafood restaurant, <laughs> going to a Caribbean restaurant, or going to a Mexican restaurant. Whatever your meal of choice is, I hope you're enjoying yourself. Or maybe you're out there on the beach enjoying the sun and water. Happy Labor Day to everybody out there. And I'm going to give a shout out to a legend in boxing who passed away here recently. R.I.P. to Ernie Shavers. One of the hardest hitters in boxing. Had a PhD in the one hitter quitter. If I had to do a top five of the hardest punchers in boxing history, I have him number two on my list. Behind Deontay Wilder. I'm gonna give you my top five. Deontay Wilder, number one. Ernie Shavers, number two. George Foreman, number three. Closely behind him, Mike Tyson, number four. Ron Lyle, number five. That's probably my top five hardest punchers in boxing history. And you notice all five of them are heavyweights. And those guys. Well, hard punches. That's why the heavyweight division is what carries the sport of boxing. Because everybody knows that one punch can change everything. Now, if we had to do a pound for pound hardest punches in boxing, you know, you have guys like Thomas Hearns on there, Roberto Duran, Javante Davis. Guys like that probably be on my pound for pound hardest punches in boxing. But we're just talking about hardest punches, period, in boxing. That's my top five. With all that being said, Let's talk about Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford, Saga, and the two, 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 I ain't, I ain't holding up no peace sign, two sticking points that are holding up this fight. One is the guarantee. I talked about that in the previous video. The PBC has sent Terrence Crawford a revised offer. What revised offer mean is they upped the offer from the original offer. And Bud hasn't accepted it. He hasn't accepted it. Another sticking point is the PBC wants Bud to sign a multi-fight deal and the contract will have Al Heyman as his advisor. Now, Bud don't have no problem with Al Heyman being his advisor, but Bud has a problem with how many fights are going to be on the deal because Bud wants to do a two-fight deal. He basically wants to fight Spence, beat him, and then fight Jamel Charlo for Undisputed at 154. PBC said, no, 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 no. We got burnt by the Canelo Alvarez. When he, we did a one-off with him when he fought Caleb Plant, and then he rolled off into the sunset with Matchroom Boxing. Now he's on a multi-fight deal with Matchroom Boxing. We're not going to get caught with our pants down in this situation, but you got to sign a multi-fight deal. You ain't going to beat Earl Spence Jr. and ride off into the sunset and maybe fight Virgil Ortiz on the zone or fight Conor Ben on matchroom boxing. No, 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 no. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. That's what the PBC is saying. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires. But that's one sticking point. The second sticking point. Well, that's the second sticking point. My bad. That's the second sticking point. The first sticking point, obviously, I just said earlier, is the guarantee. The guarantee. Earl Spence Jr. has accepted terms to fight Bud Crawford, and that was months ago. The sticking point is between the TC and the PBC, and it, and it, and it all involves around the guarantee and the multi-fight deal. Now, the PBC wants Terrence Crawford to sign basically what you would see as a three-fight deal. You would deem as a three-fight deal. Terrence Crawford will fight Spence, if he's successful, he would then have to fight Keith Thurman. Is he, if he's successful in that fight, he would then get the fight that he won on his two-fight deal, that being Jamel Lions on the Charlo. He would be the third fighter on the three-fight deal with the PBC. So basically what the PBC wants from Terrence Crawford is, you're going to fight Terrence Crawford. You're going to fight, my bad, you're going to fight Errol Spence Jr., and after that fight, no matter the outcome, you're going to have to give us two more fights under the PBC banner. That's the deal the PBC wants Terrence Crawford to agree to. Terrence Crawford, on the other hand, 
basically wants to do a one fight deal with him basically but he's willing to do a two fight deal again he wants to fight Earl Spence Jr. and he's willing to give the PBC one more fight he's very confident that he'll be able to defeat Earl Spence Jr. he'll give the PBC one more fight and that fight he will then want to fight Jamil Lyons only Charlo so he's willing to do a two fight deal Earl plus one more fight with the PBC the PBC wants him to fight Earl and then give the PBC two more fights obligated to fight on the PBC banner two more fights irregardless of the outcome of the Errol Spence Jr. fight so that's two sticking points that are holding up this fight so we will see what happens and we will see what transpires but I'm not optimistic about this fight happening when you look at the fact that Bud Crawford hasn't fought in 2022 his last fight was November 20th 2021 I don't think people have wrapped their heads around the fact that he ain't fought this year and when you listen to him in these interviews, there ain't no urgency. Now you look at Fury. Fury want to fight in December. Usa said he suffered some injuries in the AJ fight. He's not going to be available till next year. Fury like, man, I can't wait on you. So he offered a fight this morning to Joshua. And he said his team is working on a fight. If Joshua doesn't accept, they're working on another opponent for him to fight at the end of the year. He can't wait on Usa. And I don't understand that's not, why that's not the mindset of uh, Crawford. Crawford say, look at him, I got to get a fight this year. You know, I ain't fought since last year. If the PBC don't want to meet me, don't want to meet my demands and the guarantee, and they want me to find, basically sign a three-fight deal with them, I'm willing to give them a two-fight deal, and I'm not budging on that. I'm going to move on, man. I'm just going to uh, call upon the WBO to enforce a mandatory for me. Whoever's the guy that's ranked highest in the WBO, which I think is Virgil Ortiz, I think the WBO should call for that fight. You don't hear them saying none of that. There's no sense of urgency. It's like I'm satisfied with my career. I'm going to the Hall of Fame. With or without Earl Spence Jr. You know, there's no sense of urgency, man. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. The fact that Chance Crawford ain't fought in 2022. And Earl Spence Jr. ain't fought since April. April 16th, 2021, when he destroyed Yordanus Ugas. So we going on five months since he's been last seen in the ring. But everything I'm hearing is he going to fight November 19th, whether it's against... Terrence Crawford or against somebody else. He's definitely fighting November 19 on Showtime pay-per-view. I don't know what Errol Spence Jr. is waiting on. I'll probably be going to the PBC say, look, man, you know, let's let's start looking at some other uh, options. You know, let's give uh, Terrence Crawford maybe two more weeks to agree to terms. You know, the PBC's has pretty much said, look, we're not going up on the guarantee. This is our final offer. We, we've upped the original offer on the guarantee, and we're not going up anymore. But it's basically saying, okay, if y'all don't have the money, y'all need to go find the money. But the bottom line, but the problem with that is, the PBC really don't have no contacts worldwide. You know, like a matchroom boxer who have contacts in Saudi Arabia, and they got contacts all over the world. You know, they're dealing with a, the zone apps that, serves, that shows fights all over the world. So that's a global platform. The PBC is a platform of the Mecca of boxing. That's the United States of America. So they don't have a lot of contacts outside of the United States. So, And it seems to me that the Saudi Arabians, they like to put on fights involving heavyweights. Now, they do have a fight involving light heavyweights. Demetri Bivol versus Zerdo Ramirez. That'll be for Bivol's WBA light heavyweight title. So, But they haven't seemed to be interested in putting on A.L. Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford. You know, either that or, like I say, the PBC don't want to deal with fights over there. You know, some of these people uh, that put on these fights, you know, Saudi Arabia don't have the greatest history in the ways they treat women. So a lot of people, if they, they might, you know, take a moral stand and say, hey, man, I'm not putting on no fights over there in Saudi Arabia. You see the way they treat women? They treat women as second-class citizens. I'm not going to put on no event over there. I want to be a part of anything involving Saudi Arabia. Maybe that's the case. Whatever the case may be, you know, you're not going to see no Earl Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford in the Middle East. Or, you know, anywhere outside of the United States for that matter. With all that being said, Earl Spence Jr. versus Terrence Crawford, as we sit here right now, has a 25% chance of happening. In the next two weeks, if this fight is not announced, it's not happening. So right now, it's not very, very good chance of this fight happening. I'm not optimistic about this fight happening. I'm holding out hope. I'm hoping that we get a Hail Mary 
but it's not looking good because again, Earl Spence Jr. fought in April. They've been negotiating since his last fight with Ugas. That's been almost five months ago. We still haven't got a finalized agreement for these two guys to fight. Terrence Crawford ain't fought in 2022. You know, he was waiting on Earl Spence Jr. Your name is Ugas winner. He got Earl Spence Jr. as the winner of that fight. But it's not, it's no headways been made in regards to this fight coming to completion and this fight getting finalized for November 19th. But what I do know is November 19th, Earl Spence Jr. will be fighting on that date, whether it's Terrence Crawford or somebody else. I told you the options in the last video. He can fight his WBA mandatory versus Amentius Stajonis, or he can take on Keith Thurman and complete that PBC welterweight puzzle as we had Thurman versus Porter. We had Thurman versus Garcia. We had Garcia versus Porter. We had Spence versus Garcia. We had Spence versus Porter. The last piece of that puzzle is Spence versus Thurman. But Spence came out on Twitter saying he would never fight Keith Thurman. So if he does end up fighting Keith Thurman, that's going to give ammunition to a lot of these PBC haters that Al Heyman is running the whole show. Despite what these fighters saying that they're their own boss, that that ain't nothing but Fugazi, that ain't nothing but Cap, and in all actuality, ABC, my bad, Al Heyman, <laughs> runs the whole show. Runs the whole show over there. He tells those fighters who, when, and where to fight. Similar to Eddie Hearn and Anthony Joshua. You don't never hear AJ call out no fighter because he knows he ain't got no say in who he fights next. Matthew Boxing lays the groundwork to who he fights next. A lot of people saying that AJ need to take a break after the Usyk fight. The way he acted after that Usyk fight, he need to take some time off. But you listen to Eddie Hearn in these interviews, he's saying AJ is coming back in December. So they let you know that who's calling the shots over there at Matchroom Boxing. With all that being said, the Errol Spence Jr. Terrence Crawford's saga will finally come to a, its ending. Whether the fight goes down or whether the fight does not happen. We will know in the next two weeks. If it's not announced, it's not going down. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say. Follow me on Facebook, Gerard.Briscoe.3551. Like, share, and subscribe to JB Sports. The man, the myth, the legend. And I holler.